Hello, it's Leah, and today we're going to turn these fantastic elements into a collage on the front of our little pocket-sized junk journal. Last video, we created the cover and we attached the closure and we did some whip stitching. I wanna show you a few things that I did off camera. I actually went over the sides a second time because I wanted to really give that some security. So one time on the, si on the long sides and twice on the short sides. Then, with the other ones, I did some progress. With these, I sewed the sides together, the raw edges. So we've got this one, and I did the closures. I just haven't whip stitched it yet. So that one, this one, this one. And then with these, I did the closures and I put the card in their little sleeves here. And in the case of these that were patchwork and they were sewed together, some in some cases I created the patchwork on one side and then sewed it to the other side. But in other cases, I actually sewed it all the way through both layers. So then I just created this. I cut my nine inch length card and then measured where I would need it to be separated and I cut it. And then I cut my closure down so it's only attached to this side and not all the way through because it wouldn't have been able to. So in this case, it's all the way through here. I'm flipping it over just, if you have something that's pretty crazy and might show through on the other of your fabric, you might want to either cover it with a piece of paper, white piece of paper or gesso or something. Um, I'm not too bothered by that because I'm, I'm gonna have a lot of elements covering it, so I'm not too worried, but if that bothers you to see it too much, you can go ahead and, and camouflage that. So that's where we're at with the, the mass making of these. Okay, so now we're gonna do the collage, this right here. We're gonna work on that. So what I have here, this is the one we're gonna work on. I have my fabric squares, which are three inches square. And these were scraps from project that I had going a while back. And so we'll decide which one of these will go there. I also have these little circles that I cut out from a paper pad, and I'll show you that real quick. This is Dina Wakely, and she has these amazing illustrations and mixed media prints so that you can cut elements out or use the whole page. Here are this other circles. Um, Half the book is card, and and then there's paper. And I've, I've chosen that weight, just the paper weight. I don't know what exactly, oh, here it is. It's, it's telling you whatever that means. <laughs> I know what it means, but. Um, so this is kind of a fun, I mean, this one was a little bit more expensive. There's cheaper ones you could do, or you could just cut out images from magazines or books, or maybe you do your own little pieces of art. Then 
I have my little decoupaged uh, dictionary page on top of my tea dyed cheesecloth. So I have all kinds of different definitions, succeed, passionate, wisdom, gratitude, courage, goal, accomplishment, accomplish and accomplished, imagine, imaginative, hope, imagination, inspiration, knowledge, inspire and inspired. So I protected it by attaching it by Mod Podge, Mod Podge and uh, on the front too, because I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't rip or uh, disintegrate or something, because it is old. And then I have some of my Mississippi shell vintage buttons. And then I have some little boho elements that I'm gonna cut apart to use for this little area. And I've got some trims to use that I can cut up to some tatting, fun, all vintage. I don't know if these boho elements are vintage though. I can't remember. I don't remember where I got them. So let's begin our collage. Okay, I kind of went back and forth about a, a couple of these, but I think this is what I've decided. I've decided on hope and this darker one to tie in the inside with the green and the blue flower design. And I like this little circle. I think it helps the colors as well. And I went with this little trim piece with the flowers and these two buttons. And I will put probably, I'll probably do green or blue or maybe both for uh, the stitch color there. And then I'm going to just kind of feel it out and see what types of stitches I will do. I like to start by the bottom layer and work up. Two things I wanted to show you. First, while I'm doing other things, I covered this with Mod Podge, but I used a extreme glitter one because <laughs> I thought that would be kind of fun. And it will be, I mean, it, it's already looking pretty cool, but you get it everywhere. So be very careful if you get the glitter kind. So I'm gonna set that aside while I do the stitching. Secondly, I uh, it's kind of dark in here and I apologize. Usually this is a really great room for natural light, but it is, we're having like sleet, snow, rain, and it's super overcast, so pretty dark in here. So I apologize for the lighting.
Hello, I'm back. I want to show you something before I do anything with the buttons. I decided to experiment with dyeing them because I thought it would be cool to have them stand out a little bit more. And if you remember on this one, I had a couple dyed buttons here. These I did not dye myself. These were in um, the pack of vintage buttons. Someone else had dyed these and I only had a few of these. So I thought, well, why can't I do it? <laughs> so I quickly watched a few videos and alcohol ink was something that a lot of people use to dye their white or clear uh, buttons. And I happen to have this set. I bought these a couple years ago. I have not used them since. So this is the Ranger brand, the Tim Holtz alcohol inks. And I had butterscotch, rust, stone washed, stream, pitch black, and wild plum. So I'm sure this was a set of some sort. I'm not sure um, if you can still get this set. As I said, this was a while ago. But I just did some experimenting and I just kind of combined these two, these two, and these two. And this is what I got. So the purple, although really cool, and I'll use them for other projects, I think that's not for, for the, this color scheme that I have going on, but definitely this color and this color. So I'm going to do a few, all the ones that I had picked out for these uh, journals with you so that you can see what uh, I did. Okay, so I have something to protect. This is just a cutting mat. And um, I just have a Ziploc here. And I'm gonna split these up evenly here. And I'm gonna do half and half. So half in this, and we're going to do about six drops of two, three, four, five, six of the rest, and six drops of the butterscotch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. <laughs> okay, and then not to spill it, I'm going to seal it and then I'm going to roll these around in it until I like how it looks. There's quite a few people on YouTube that do this, so if you want to see other people do it, feel free. A little bit more, just to get it a little bit more saturated. And then you can just dump it out and it doesn't take long to dry. All right, let's do the other half. I think this will be a f another fun layer of texture in that Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, another layer of color. Oh, so that was the stream. I kind of wish I had green, but I don't. So we'll just go with these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know why I'm deciding eight. Sometimes you don't know why you do things. You just do. Seal it up and then roll it around. That's gorgeous, isn't it? Love that color. Oh, blues and greens are my favorite, and I love the deep tones. Okay. 
So I, I think you can also do this with uh, writ dies. I'm sure there's others, other ways too. I just happen to have these alcohol inks. I was very happy I knew where they were <laughs> in my disaster of my rooms right now. Okay, dump them out. And it, like I said, I, it doesn't take long before they dry out. So I'm gonna add these lovely colors to the journals as well. So off camera, I did a couple things. Um, I had to take this knot out in order to get that circle where I wanted it. So I put that knot back um, then through all the layers because I, I wanted uneven knots there. In addition, I added some whip stitching here at the bottom of the dictionary page I just felt like it needed just a little bit more. If you see on this other one that I did, I probably am gonna add more to this one. Um, it just feels too, bleh, you know, just stuck on there. So uh, I'll be adding some more to this one. But I love how all the elements are the same, but slightly different. And I think that's, that's so much fun when you have the, your elements all ready and waiting for you to start their creative process and you don't have to worry about gathering what you need um, but everyone turns out slightly different because well at least for me i don't like to have anything i do the same i like to have everything i do one of a kind so i really like that I love my dyed buttons there. I think those are real fun, especially against that off-white background of the trim piece there. In the next video, we will do the pages and, and sew the signature in, as well as the front and back covers. We'll add the felt piece, with the little embroidery on the corners and create our little envelope here. So thank you so much for joining me today for this little upcycled pocket junk journal. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.